Hey everybody, welcome to my Hawaiian steel guitar seminar for C6 Lap Steel. My name's Troy Brenningmeyer with Lessons with Troy. You might have seen me on YouTube or on my website. But uh, I'm just going to be going over some real useful things today, some, some pretty basic things, so it's not going to get too advanced. And uh, first things first, I do have an 8-string here. This is my Bill Asher made 8-string lap steel. But we're really going to be focused on your, your six strings. So a lot of you might have just a six string lap steel, so don't worry that I have eight. Um, just focus on strings six through one. So if we look at it here, that would be this string is string six. So we can kind of ignore these two lower strings, right? And this tuning that we're in, C6 tuning, it's C, E, G, and then A, C, E. So we have a C chord here, C, E, G, and that's a C triad. And then A, C, E is an A minor triad. So that's our C6 tuning with a high E. Some of you might know a C6 tuning with a high G, and that's a different tuning. Um, and I do get some questions. Um, should I buy a six string, a seven string, an eight string? Uh, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, you know, normally the six strings might be a little bit cheaper. I do think that, you know, if you're getting into like A6 tuning or maybe a C6 with a high G on top, you know, a 7 or an 8 string might be good for that. But if you're just focused on C6, um, you know, a 6 string lap steel will be fine for you. So a um, couple things. Uh, let's talk about bar, your bar and your picks. So keep in mind, I do use this kind of a bar. This is more of a Dobro bar, right? This is a, a shear horn stainless steel bar i really like it. it's got the grooves on the edges a lot of hawaiian players play the round uh, bullet bar but it's a, a, a round bar kind of about this length but the whole thing's round so whatever you feel comfortable with um, and then as far as picks go i like these pro pick they're p-r-o-p-i-k the double band this one's actually broke right there but a double band straight blade is what i what I use, and then I use a Zuki's thumb pick. Um, this is an L10, but it'll have a little angle here on the on the pick. Let me see if I can find a different one. Here's an L20. See how that kind of has a a little angle to the tip of it, and that kind of hits the string at a, at a good angle when you're playing. Okay, so I really wanted to talk about some technique, and and um, we we got. Got it tuned up, you know, use a tuner to tune tune it up. Once again, C, E, G, A, C, E. And one of the first things, let's focus, let's not even focus on the, the left hand, the bar hand right now. Let's just focus on the right hand. This is how I teach students um, technique when they're just starting off. I say, make a fist like this, right? And then put it about there on your lap steel. Still have the fist open. Now, you're just going to slowly open your hand like that to where you could put a ping pong ball or a golf ball right there, right? And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna roll, keep your hand in that position, just roll your hand over like that. Now what you'll see is the thumb should be in front of the index and these fingers are curved right here. You don't want your fingers out. And let's grab strings three, two, and one, just like that. Now notice too how I've got the palm, this part of my hand on the, on the strings. And I've got curve to the fingers. This knuckle is the highest part of my hand too. That's, that's pretty important. Now when you're plucking, you don't want these fingers to collide like that, right? So your thumb picks in front of your index. And this is a great little exercise. Just grabbing right off the bat strings, three, two, and one, and then stopping it with this, this part of your hand. A lot of people call that Palm blocking, um, it's a muting technique. Uh, pick blocking is when you stop it just with your picks, like that. But you can do a combination where you kind of stop it with this part of your hand, then your picks come down. Okay, so do that, and then let's move to the next set of three strings, strings four, four three, and two. Now, if you stop it with your palm, right, or the, the heel, that's actually the heel of your hand, before your picks come down, then you won't get as much pick noise. You can get a lot of that pick noise like that, right? And I'll try to talk in this lesson about how to eliminate noise and things like that. 
Okay, and then the idea is just go to the next set of three strings. Strings, I guess that's five, four, and three. And then six, five, and four. And then what you're gonna find is when you're on these lower strings, if you don't hit the string just right, you'll hear that scratchy scratch thing on the, with the, your picks hitting the string. You're scratching on the strings, you know, because they're wound strings on the lower strings. So try to have that. Another thing is, is I a lot of students want to put their lap steel just straight out like that. What I like to do is kind of pull it in towards me a little bit. This this part here, kind of pull it in towards my right hip here, and that and then you want to spread your legs out so that your knee is supporting the that part of of the uh, the neck of the lap steel. A lot of people will do this, and then it's wobbly. Right? But if you spread your legs out like that, pull the body in this way, then it's real stable. And then the other thing is, is you really want to have just a relaxed shoulders, relaxed arms. This knuckles, the tallest part of your hand, do the fist. Open it up just a little bit, roll it over and grab those three strings there. And then you'll just pluck and then you'll stop and then you'll go to the next one. Just that alone is a great exercise. See, you can go up and down the strings like that. No bar, you're not doing anything with the bar yet. Now, notice how I'm not getting this. You hear, hear all that? If you use that heel of your hand first, it really eliminates a lot of that clanky clank of the, of the picks. So anyways, that, that's a great, now, in that exercise, I'm picking everything at the same time. Now, the other thing you can do is, is pick them one at a time, strings three, two, one, and then mute out, right? So the trick is to that, right there, you're not gonna get any sound if you're, you're the heel of your hand is on the strings, right? So you just kind of lift your heel up and then bring it back down. It doesn't have to be much. Those fingers are nice and curved, thumbs in front of your index. Okay, so that'll be a good practice just to kind of get you going, you know, with... Uh, with good right hand technique. So let's talk about left hand technique. Now, if you have a bar like mine with the grooves on it, um, a lot of people will hold the bar like that when they're just starting off. You really want to grab the bar with your middle finger and your uh, your thumb, kind of like this, right? And then your index on top. If you have a round bar, it's kind of the same thing, right? You just you put that index on top, and the idea is is your bar is straight with the fret. Now, some students, another thing that I see some students do is the bar is too, too far into their hand like that, right? So what I like to do is tell them to put the end of the bar kind of right here where your that part of your, of your palm, the very top of your palm right there, where your fingers meet the hand or palm, whatever it's called, about like that. That puts in a real good space and um, if it's if you're playing chords, you can keep the bar flat. If you're playing individual notes, you can tilt the bar up to play individual notes, right? And you might see me, I play sometimes on the very top corner of the bar, the underside of the bar, kind of like that. So if, if you want to play along with me, I'm on my fifth fret here. And I guess we need to jump into, now that we got, you know, know how to hold the bar and everything, need to jump into some chords. Now, every time you play a straight bar, string six through one, that's what's called a sixth chord. A sixth chord is a major triad, C, E, G, with the sixth tone of the scale in there. So you're adding that A note is the sixth tone of our 
C major scale. That's why it's called a C6 chord. C, E, G, A, C, E. Okay, so if we want to know all of, all of these chords, the major chords, let's not focus on our sharps and flat chords just yet. So on your uh, second fret, that's going to be a D chord. D6, they're all six chords, so D6. Okay, on your fourth fret, that's going to be an E6. On your fifth fret, that's an F6. Seventh fret is a G6. Keep going up. Ninth fret is an A6. Eleventh fret is B6. And then it all repeats when you get to your twelfth fret. Once again, a C6. Now, a good way to remember this is all of the chords in between each chord, C to D, D to E, the only chords where they're right next to each other without a fret in between are the chords E to F and B to C, right? Our E chord to our C, F chord. Okay, now in between each one, like C to D, we have a C sharp. In between D and E, we have a D sharp. Now keep in mind, when you talk about sharps and flats, if you move C up one, that's a C sharp. If you move D back one, that's a D flat. So you may all, all know this stuff already, but uh, just kind of learn in our course. Now let's stick right now to the key of C for just a second and talk about, I always like to tell people about the number system, one, four, five, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So in any key, you have three major chords, three minor chords, and a diminished. Well, in C, your open is a C6, and your 12th fret is a C6. I'll just call it a C chord for right now. Because everything's a six chord, basically, while you're strumming all the strings. Um, when you strum your 5th fret, that's an F. And your 7th fret's a G. Okay, so they call that the one chord and the four chord and the five chord because this is the root note or the first note of the scale. And then we've got F is the fourth note of our scale, C, D, E, F, right? And then G is the fifth note. And we go back. So those are our three major chords in the key of C, C, F, and G. So you might hear me say a lot of times the one chord, the four chord, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now, this is kind of neat. You've got your six chord, your minor six chord, right on your top three strings of your one chord, right? That's the notes A, C, E, built off of the sixth tone of our scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, right? But it's not a, it's not a major, it's actually a minor. Right, because you can't play, I mean you could, but it falls outside of the key on this ninth fret. Okay, so the other neat thing is under our F chord, right on the top three strings of it, that's also a minor chord within the key. Okay, let's figure out what notes those are. That's D, F, and A. D, F, A, that's going to be our, our minor two chord, our D minor. So we have an A minor, a D minor, and then if you move D up two frets, there's our E minor. So our three major chords are C, and it is always going to be like this. Uh, and then when you switch keys, you basically move the whole pattern to a different fret. But open, or let's say zero or whatever, our root position, C, up to fifth fret or five frets up our four chord and up to is our five chord our minor six chord is on top three strings three two one our two chord is going to be on on the top three strings of our four chord it's getting confusing i know and our three chord is the top three strings of our five chord okay now the other thing that I wanted to talk about is underneath underneath your one chord, let's say, our C chord. 
on strings three and two is a really useful version of not not just the A minor, right? But actually I use these two strings, strings three and two a lot as my, as two notes out of my four chord, right? Cause that's the notes A and C. And then if you move that up two frets, or here, right? Second, second fret is the same as 14th fret. That's gonna be our five chord, our G chord. So that to me is really, is something really useful. Okay, so let me back up just a little bit here. Cause I, I'll take a step back from some of these, the theory stuff. That's really as much theory as I wanted to get into. We'll, we'll work on uh, maybe some slants too, but what you might be finding if you're if you're playing is you have noise too. I, I kind of didn't mention this at the beginning, but I wanted to talk about it. You have noise when you pick. You have you know you have a bar. You got picks. You got all sorts of noise that that can happen. A lot of times, what happens is if your bar is not level on the strings, right? Or maybe it's tilted up just a little bit, you know. You'll get you'll get rattle under your bar. So rattling, a lot of times, that's just co comes from your bar not being on all the strings equally. You don't have to push down. You know, there's not like a, a you know, you're not pushing down on the bar. It's really just the weight of your hand and the weight of the bar. So a lot of times, just take that thumb and let's strum the fifth fret. We just want a real clean, crisp sound. Now. The other thing is, is sometimes you get noise that you can mute out with these two fingers on your left hand, right? You want those out behind the bar like this. You don't want them pointing up like that. You really want them behind the bar. Okay. And then you get picking noise too with your picks. Remember I was saying... A lot of times I'll hear students and they'll start playing these lower strings and they have a weird angle and they start getting that real scratchy sound like that. So make sure when you're playing with your picks, your picks are getting a nice, that, that flat part of the pick there is coming on the string. And, you, and you're just a clean pick right through the string. And when you mute, try to use the heel of your hand like I said before and then lay your picks down almost at the same time. You'll get to the point to where it's just right before your picks come down. Okay, so um, let's see. I did wanna talk about slant techniques too today, just to kind of show you how I do slants. Uh, let's see, if we're, let's play like we're in the key of F. And say I wanted to, let me see, actually, and we're playing an F up here. Remember I said you can get an F under your C chord? So I'm going to play that as an F. It's just a little double stop two note part of an F. But I'm going to walk that down to a slant. And that slant can be kind of difficult to get. Okay, so let me just show you how I technically do a slant. So if I'm doing, if I'm holding the bar like this and I wanna slant my bar, let's say on frets eight and nine, right? What I'll do is I'll take my thumb and I don't, I don't do this and I don't do this, you know, with my wrist. What I do is I just push with my thumb just like that and the bar actually goes kind of underneath my middle finger just like that you just it's almost like mad like a sleight of hand trick here's right you just kind of push right back here with your thumb and that and lift your middle finger up a little bit and you're going to hold it kind of like that and the other thing is you can feel free to use a tuner too when you're doing these slants You 
you need to have your tuner on so you can see if you're in tune. The other way you can do it is is maybe try to find those notes in a different place, you know. Maybe just pick them individually like that, you know, with the tip of your bar. Find them with the tuner and play them over and over again. That's 8th fret, 3rd string, ninth fret, 2nd string. So you get those notes individually like that, and then take your bar, you're going to twist it like that, just, just like that. And you'll find those notes individually like that. Now what I like to do is do that where you're walking it down, straight bar 12 and 12, 11 and 11, 10 and 10, and then you're slanting that 8 and 9. So that's what we call a forward slant, because the tip of the bar, it's going forward like that. Well, if the tip of the bar goes reverse, uh, that's a reverse slant. Now you might get those... doing something like that. Let's say we're in the key of F, right? And I want to do a, a reverse slant on uh, first string, sixth fret, fourth string, seventh fret. So maybe find those notes first, get them in tune. Here's a B flat note and a D note. Okay, now, how are we going to get that without... Once again, we don't want to do anything weird with our with our hand, it's going or elbow or shoulder or anything. What what's going to happen is you're actually going to let me show it up close. You're going to super slow motion. We grab the ends of the bar, thumb and middle. The index kind of stays on top. So what I do is I kind of lift my thumb out like that. Kind of lift. You can see it here. Kind of lift my wrist like that, and that puts my puts my thumb on the end of the bar. Now I leave my index there, I grab the, the top end of the bar with my middle finger, and then I just bring my wrist back down, just like that. So if this is straight, see I grab the ends of the bar, like this. And this one is a little bit difficult because it's real smooth on the on the ends. But with a round bar, you can do the same thing. You know, you've got actually it might be a little easier. They got a little indention a lot of times on the end of the bar. But that index on top kind of supports supports it on that reverse slant. So you might want to just try that at first. Get those notes. those notes in tune and then do a reverse slant on 7th fret 4th string 6th fret 1st string and then go to a straight bar You're, once again thumbs playing that 4th string middle fingers playing the 1st string So it's kind of a neat little pattern that you can do reverse slants on, right? You can actually walk, let's say we're in the key of F. F is our one chord, B flat on 10th fret is our four chord, and C is our five chord. So what you can do is you can actually walk that, you can walk using those, using those uh, intervals there. You can walk that up to your four chord, your B flat chord, and then walk it back down. So just go real slow. I'm probably not perfectly in tune there. So if you go real slow. Then you keep going up from there. But I just wanted to show you that. Now the other thing I really wanted to show you is um, just a real basic major scale, right? Playing, what I do a lot of times, I play on the tip of my bar. You know, that C, that, that major scale, that, that's actually an F major scale because we're on our fifth fret. 
But that shape stays the same as long as you remember kind of where you're at. We're going to end one fret above from our five chord. Keep in mind, in the key of F, we got F, B flat on 10th fret, and C. And they're all six chords, but uh, on my 12th fret. So let's play the scale here. It's second string, fifth fret. That's the note F. And then G, A, B flat. So we got 5th fret, 2nd string, 7th fret, 2nd string. Move up to our 1st string, 5th fret, 6th fret, 8th fret, 10th fret, 12th fret, 13th fret. Now the way I do this to try to make it smooth is... See how I kind of slide into each note? F, G... A, B flat. Now, the less note, the less space you have in between each note, right? See, I have a, I, I you kind of can hear a little bit of the sound of the previous note as you're going. Let's start on this fifth fret first string. So I'm just gonna let. I'm not ever gonna take my bar off the string. I'm just going to let it slide into each note. And maybe I'll pluck it once the sound kind of starts dying off. We got 5th fret, 6th fret. That's just a slide. I'm just going to leave my bar on there, let it slide up to 8th fret, pluck it. Slide up to 10, let it slide up to 12, pluck it. And then slide up to 13. then you can play it in reverse like that too and like I said try to get don't play it like this don't go right we want it real smooth and then if you're in G you can do the same thing just remember that pattern Right? And, uh, you know, it's always nice to play with jam tracks or something in the background that can kind of help you with your intonation, meaning playing in tune. And uh, see what else we got on here that I wanted to cover. I think that's about it for right now. Now... Um, you know, I, vibrato is something too. I mean, obviously, you know, there's different ways of playing with vibrato. Um, Alan Akaka and Bobby Ngano and all the Hawaiian guys, they have such great vibrato. And, um, you know, a lot of professional players have just developed their vibrato, right? Well, what, what you can do... You can start off without without a lot of vibrato, you know, maybe start off pl trying to play really well in tune first and then and then kind of add vibrato just sparingly. Maybe uh, grab a chord, you know. Now I just kind of try to go back and forth about that speed. No, I know that sometimes, you know, you can do it too fast and it can sound like a mosquito. But I, I, I just like a real mellow vibrato. And this is a very personal thing, too. Maybe listen to a whole lot of players and, and see what, whose vibrato you might want to emulate, whose vibrato you really like. And seek out, you know, Alan, Alan Akaka is a great teacher. And I think he has some of the, some of the best vibrato out there. And uh, for Hawaiian style vibrato, you know, and it, and it can kind of too depend on the the uh, era that you're wanting to kind of emulate. I really like Bobby and Gano's playing, and it seems like he has a nice, real nice mellow vibrato. It's not real fast, you know. 
And it so different things that you can do with everything that I showed you today, you know, playing the chords, um, sliding into the chords. Uh, you know, that might be one more thing I want to talk about is, is uh, the different slides, right? And the one major slide is a one fret slide, right? Let's, let's say whatever chord you want to grab, just grab three strings of it. Let's say grab strings four, three, and two. And work on just sliding that to where your bar's not, not turning or anything like that. Just a nice one fret slide and then a nice mellow vibrato. Maybe grab strings three, two, and one. Right, but that one fret slide, you might think, oh, that's only one fret. That's not that far of a slide, really. But that has that real Hawaiian sound to it. That, you know, if you just really stretch it out, stretch out that, slow down that slide. Just a nice one fret slide. So another thing you can do is try to slide up the octave. Like let's say we're, we're going to go F here, and that's on our fifth fret. Well, the octave is 12 frets up, right? So if we got fifth fret here, 12 plus 5 is fret 17. And I always like to tell students to use the dots. We have a dot here on 15, right behind 15, and a dot right here behind 17. So say we got this F. I'm going to slide it up to this second dot right here, you know, right to the right of that dot. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop that slide right before the fret, right? So stop at 16 and then do a slow slide into 17. Right, that one fret slide. And then try to get that, that one fret slide really smooth. Let's see if you can see it better there. Here's fret 5. Fret 16 into fret 17. And you can do that with whatever chord you want. Uh, if you want to know the octave of it, just add 12 to it. Or just follow your dots. A lot of times, like this dot here matches up with that dot. This dot matches up with that dot. Okay, everybody, hope you enjoyed this little seminar and, and uh, learned some, some just some basic things. Uh, and uh, we'll see you on the next lesson. Take care. Thanks again. Bye.